know that this person who made the phone must be smart. You know, likewise must have ability. All right. I'm just this phone just on a smaller scale. You understand? What about you and I? I mean, yes, there's some stuff we know about the maker of the phone, but we will never be able to know if the person who made the phone is he married or not. That's beyond our knowledge. But we can utilize some of our sound reasoning to come to a conclusion to know about the Creator. That's what Allah taught us to look at the universe and reflect. Why? Because the universe points toward Him, you know, the Creator of everything. And that should be worshipped alone. So everything there is an order. You have a nose next to your mouth. Why? Before you eat, smell food. You have eyebrows above your eyes. Why? Because the, so, so, the, the, sweat, the sweat contains the salt. If it keeps going to your eyes, it will damage it. That cannot come randomness. You have a joint and elbows. You have a teeth in your mouth. You have two types of liquid. There's one in your eyes and one in your ears. The one in your ears is thicker. The one in your eyes is uh, lighter. Okay? Why? Because that is, prevents the, the, the insect going to your, body, the, to your ears. That is impossible, irrational, illogical. All of these signs of a maker which has a knowledge and wisdom just came randomly. Doesn't make any sense. What do you think? What said makes sense? Yes, but how did Allah get the knowledge to create human? No, before how Allah got a knowledge because or is the, he the knowledge? yeah, Allah has the perfect knowledge. Yeah, because like I said to you, this this a logical question. A logical question is like basically you see is like me. I'm standing next to a chair. Yes, I'm standing next to a chair to give you analogy. So what I do, you go and you come back. There's no chair there anymore. You're gonna think, okay, Shamsi, my name is Shamsi. Shamsi must move the chair. Then you go to shop, you come back, I'm not here anymore. You're not gonna think, okay, the chair, someone has to move the chair. Therefore, the same thing can apply to Shamsi. Someone has to move Shamsi. No. There's difference between the chair and me. There's difference between, it makes sense? Yeah. There's difference between the creation and the creator. So, what you do, you try to apply the rulings of the creation to the creator. Like I, like I said, that's why when people say, who created Allah, doesn't make any sense. Because if we accept and establish Allah is the creator of everything, therefore, if he's been created, he cannot be the creator of everything. And if he's the creator of everything, he's not created. That's, yeah, that's what Allah, one of Allah's names, Al-Awwalu. Look how our Prophet Muhammad described Allah. Al-Awwalu, laysa qablahu shay. Al-Akhiru, laysa ba'dahu shay. He's the first. And there's not, but why you do operation? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> he's the first and there's nothing before him. And he's the last and there's nothing after him. So, like I said, the beauty of Islam is not based upon blind faith like Christianity. Believe Jesus died for your sins. Or believe that Prophet Muhammad came to my dream. If Prophet Muhammad did care, come to my dream, that's for me. But to tell you become a Muslim because Prophet Muhammad came to, me, to my dream, that is not a proof. That's why Islam is based upon universal proofs. Understand? So, and there's many. That's why in the Quran, Allah told us, Inna fi khalq samawati wal ard, within the creation of the heavens and the earth, layli wal nahar, and the alteration of a day and night, it is a science for people of understanding. When you look at today, what is it? Sunday. What is tomorrow? Monday. What is the day after? Uh, Tuesday. There's sun setting, sun rising. You know, one of our scholars called Ibn Al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him. He said, it's illogical, this universe, without creator. You can see this universe is being, uh, being taken care of. All the everything, you understand? When, uh, one of our scholars called Sheikh Fawzan, he said, that if, it's, if, if everything is randomness, let us, let, us be, let us be true to our statement. If everything is randomness, then how come every woman give a birth to a child? Because if it's randomness, what it means? Because we have to be true to our statement. Randomness meaning anything can happen. A woman can give birth to chicken. Chicken give birth to a rat. A rat give birth to an uh, uh, elephant. Because it's randomness. Everything's happening. You understand? The fact that we see order, knowledge, you know? Even you, you grow up, you look, you, Allah created you as a weak child. You grow up, you grow up, and you go back to what? To become weak again. Even the, 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 the trees and everything, they grow up to become stronger, stronger, then they become weak. That Allah has shown us all of you are weak except Allah. All of us, you know, subhanallah. So Allah has shown you that he's the all-powerful. What I'm saying to you, sister, this, this from a rational argument. Also from a rational argument, 
Okay, let me ask you, who knows the future in details? No one except a creator, because why? If I create a phone, if I'm the first person to make a phone from scratch, no one knows about the phone in details except who? Except me, because I made it from scratch, yeah? Likewise, now, when you come to Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, alayhi uh, he said he was a messenger of the Most High, the Creator, Allah. He came with the prophecies about the future. You don't have to be a Muslim to see it. You can see it even if you are a non, not a Muslim. Prophet Muhammad told us it will come a time when you see the bear, food Arab man, the Bedouins, competing in building tall buildings. Yeah? When the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that, alayhi that was 1,400 years ago. Let me ask you, where is the tallest building in the world? Who said Dubai? <laughs> Let's answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not cheating exam, brother. <laughs> exam, not cheating, yeah? Yeah. You know, you know, is it in Dubai, yeah? Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa. Yeah, Burj Khalifa. Who's competing with them is Saudi. So the question you ask yourself, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, when there was no any indication in the Arab Peninsula, when there were people of tents, they didn't even have a proper houses, you know? They were barefooted people, they were shepherds. There was no any indication to indicate that will happen. Rather, historically speaking, from the Muslim sources and non-Muslim sources, that the Romans and the, 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 the Persians, back in those days, they were great empires. They were coming after the Prophet Muhammad's followers. So it was more likely, there was more proof that Prophet Muhammad's followers, they would perish, the Arabs were going to perish. But what happened? They became leaders. And what happened? We, they start competing in building tall buildings. The question, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, telling us about something, not randomly, specifically, precisely. Because why? He said he's a messenger of Allah. The other thing, you know about interest? Interest, interest yeah. Yeah, interest usually, like banks. Yeah, yeah when, they, when they borrow you 10,000, you have to give it back 15,000, yeah? Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, told us, it will come a time when interest will become widespread. Even if you are not involved directly, it will affect you. Wait, this is so powerful. This cannot be coming just you guessing. No, no, no. You, you become widespread, even if you're not involved, directly will affect you. Now, by default, if you open a bank account, you are involved in interest, even if you don't like it. The question, how this man who existed 1,400 years ago in the middle of nowhere is coming with his prophecies? So what I'm doing, I'm, I showed you a rational argument about Allah's existence. Likewise, I'm strengthening it more stronger about this man who is coming with his uh, uh, prophecies, not just prophecies. I can, I can go on about prophecies, prophecies. I'll give you another prophecy that Prophet Muhammad mentioned. Prophet Muhammad mentioned when he was in Mecca, he, was, he had very few followers. And his followers, they were getting punished and tortured by the Arab pagans, those, the leaders who rejected his message, yeah? So Prophet Muhammad was telling his companions at that time in Mecca, he's telling them you're going to conquer Persia and Roma. Uh, sorry, Persia and Byzantine and the Romans, yeah? And the, back in those days, Persians and the Romans, they had, uh, uh, the, the world was divided, was divided into two. Either you are belong to the Persian Empire or to the Byzantine Empire, yes? So the point here is that he's telling them that you will overpower them. There's an English historian, he said this prophecy is like crazy. How he's telling the people, there were few of them, they were being punished and tortured, they're going to overpower. They were, they were scared for their lives just with their own people, like them, normal people, let alone Persia and, and, and Byzantine. Historically speaking, the time of the Prophet Muhammad, Umar ibn Khattab, who was the, the companion of Prophet Muhammad, Khalid al-Walid, one of the Muslim soldiers, he defeated Persia and Byzantine. Both of them at the same time. Also, Prophet Muhammad also in the Quran. You know, there is not any doubt, sister. You have to understand there is a huge war against Islam. There is a big campaign. In Australia itself, by itself, there is every day many articles speaking in a negative way about Islam. Yeah? Likewise in Britain, likewise in France, likewise in Belgium, Germany, and so on. But we know the fastest growing religion in the Western world is what? It's Islam. Recently, they, there's a uh, statistics came out that Christianity is declining, Islam is inclining. Yeah? But guess what? Allah mentioned that in the Quran, 1,400 years ago, 
ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله it is Allah who sent his prophet Muhammad with Islam in order for Islam to overpower all other religions to prevail now this statement Allah mentioned this 1400 years ago now there is many barriers because you have to understand the opponents of the Muslims they have strong material they have strong money they have more money than us yes big companies but yet Islam is spreading you know who's doing the job the creator of everything because if you look at it from material point of view the Muslims don't really have a strong uh, uh, social media like, like how the the Western world controls social media so from material point of view if you know what doesn't make any sense to me these guys they don't even have the enough tools to overpower the Western media to defend their religion but Islam is spreading because it's not us doing the job it's Allah the creator of everything you understand also what I was gonna mention so far what do you think what I said before I carry on Sort of like, walked me through the whole thing as well. Yeah. It's there are some interesting things. Yeah, because you know when I have discussion, I will make sure that everything's clear before I move on. Yeah. yeah. yeah? And also, what what makes special about Islam as well, and show that Islam from God, yeah, from the Creator of everything, and Prophet Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. You know, Islam came to preserve five things. Pay attention to this. Yeah? Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean when we say Islam came to preserve religion? Mean in Islam, worshiping Allah alone and keeping Islam the way it is is very important. And anyone who tries to break down that, there is a capital punishment for it. You understand? And we're gonna show you why there is capital punishment for breaking Islam or going against Allah. Yeah? Because when you worship Allah alone and you follow Islam, that's the first thing. Islam came to preserve religion. Because when you don't have the true God, we start following our desires. Correct? Today, it's very sad what we see. As some people do uh, identify themselves as a rabbit, as a, yes, that's the reality. Yeah, they will lie. You know, seriously, there, there is a woman she, in California. She was in a, in, a, in a changing room. A man came in, and she was very surprised. Not Muslim. She called. She said, "I was changing," and this man. She said, "You have to respect him because why? He identified himself as a woman." You know. So, and Allah mentioned that in the Quran, by the way, this is another prophecy. Allah mentioned in the Quran, there's a verse that Satan will inspire people to change Allah's creation. Mm. To make it clear to you, sister, imagine I say to you, look, sister, I feel like I'm armless. I'm what? Armless. Yeah? Even though clearly you, have, you see I have an arm. But you know, but I feel I was born in a wrong body. Mm. I'm armless. Would you help me to cut it off? It's actually a thing. Do do I'm asking, would you help me? No way, because you are. You can see you're a smart girl. How on earth you are taking people's money, taxes, to go help a man because he feels something good in him, cut off everything. And that's what Allah mentioned in the Quran, that, that the, the meaning of it. The meaning of it will indicate that they will change Allah's creation. The, yes, the verse about the animals, but also it's general. And that's what we see now. And this is the outcome of not having the true God. When you have no God, because everything becomes subje subjective. That's why they say the truth according to you. The truth according to him. But that leads to what? It leads to destruction. Because I can do some evil things and I say, no, 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 no. You believe it's wrong because according to you. But it's right according to me. So we have to respect one another. You have to respect another because we cannot force me. But Islam comes in now. That leads to destruction. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, if the truth follow people's desires, the heavens and the earth will be corrupted. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, the verse? It means that if the truth starts, if the, 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 the people start dictating what is the truth, then everyone has desires. So the first one, Islam came to preserve religion, all right? Worshiping God alone. Secondly, Islam came to preserve intellect. That's why in Islam, smoking drugs and drinking alcohol is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why gambling and interest is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve marriage and lineage and heritage. That's why fornication, adultery is forbidden. Fifthly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why taking anything, harming your body, committing suicide, killing innocent people is forbidden. These five things that Islam came to preserve, if we do preserve them, we will have a healthy society. 
a good society. And in Islam, not just preserve them by, no, even there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a punishment for that. What is the opposite of that? Alcohol. Is alcohol good for us? Alcohol is bad for us, individually and collectively, all right? Like gambling, gambling is bad for us, individually and collectively. Interest, interest make the rich richer, poor poorer. So uh, there is some people are benefiting from these vices. Likewise, fornication, destroy families, households, you know? So, and all of this evil goes back to the greatest evil, which is when you turn away from your creator. When you start worshiping a false god, or you turn away from your creator. And like I said, yes, there is some people benefiting from these vices. That's why these vices, which I have mentioned to you, is bad for us. In, in many countries, it's been glamorized and promoted and glorified. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the, those are not, not, when I say the, the people, the elite, no, I'm not talking about like, president, no, no, there's secret societies who are making money from the suffering of the people. They, they don't care about us. They care about their pockets, bankers and so on. They don't care if you kill yourself, you, you know, as long as they're making the money. That's why here, that's the point. That's the, the, you have to understand this point very well. That's why majority of times, those who are very hostile to Islam are those who are in power because they look at Islam as a threat for their business. Because Islam is coming to protect you and protect society from alcohol, drugs, gambling and so on. But I'm making money from that. So I'm going to look at you as an evil man, even though you're a good woman. So what I'm going to do, because I'm a rich man, I'm going to utilize my money to make you look bad, even though you're a good person. How, how, how is it happening now? Through the media. Yeah? But the question you ask yourself, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago is coming with a perfect way of life? On the other hand, we have these politicians who studied in the best universities around the world. They cannot resolve the problems we are facing. Because that man, He's a messenger of the creator of everything. And the creator of everything, when he legislates something for you, he will not legislate something to harm you. And let me show you when we do not follow God, we start following our desires. I can go to off license. You know off license, yeah? He's selling alcohol, correct? And I'm selling drugs, the police will come and arrest me. Even though what I'm selling can cause lesser harm than the alcohol that is being sold in off license, yes? So, and majority of crimes in Britain, according to my knowledge, because of alcohol. So why I'm not allowed to sell drugs? And why the person of license is allowed to sell alcohol, even though it causes harm and it leads people to do uh, uh, crimes? Because that's when you have desires. When you have desires, I love alcohol. So I'm going to do and say, alcohol is okay. I don't like drugs, so I'm going to say it's not okay. You see? And that's what Allah mentioned in the Quran. So when you look to Islam, it's a perfect way of life. It's, that's why it's impossible for one man to come with this legislation, detailed legislation. Because now if you have a country, you have to get experts in war, experts in economy, experts in uh, society, experts in many things. Islam, Islamic society is based upon one man's teaching in every field, in marriage, in divorce, in war, in peace, in everything. In transactions, no way in the history one man can come with this detailed legislation, except, of course, Moses is a prophet. We believe that. If someone says Moses, I say, yeah, just prove my point. I believe Moses is a prophet. So I'm saying when you reflect upon Islam, there's overwhelming proofs, either intellectual proofs, tangible proofs, that Islam is the truth.